What's happening, Life Gang crew? It's a freaky Friday night. You know, Professor Addiction type of freaky Friday night. And we're just coming in here to show you guys a little love the Friday night before Power, the Friday night before Hightown, and also the Friday night before Hawkeye, just to kind of see what you, the fans, are thinking about in terms of where these shows are going, how you feeling on the end of this week, and what your weekends are going to look like, my people. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. This is our live view where we try to interact with the Life Gang subscribers that come and check us out live. I try to answer some of your questions, shoot the breeze with you, and try to just thoroughly entertain you with a few lackluster jokes and a few good ones here and there. Let me shout out all the people. Cynthia Charles, Support Gaming, Tressa C, Jess Sheldon, Ishmael. <laughs> He said, Nate never hate. Who, who, which, which Nate we talking about, my brother? All in the building to talk a little power. And before we get into this thing, what's up, Reggie? What's up, Mally Lee? Mario Freeman? Before we dive into this thing, happy Friday, everybody. Let's kind of look at the trailer for power real quick, one more time. And then I want you guys to let me know what you think. Here we go. Kane found a new connect, so we all back in business together. Now, whatever beef y'all still got, squash that shit right now. We need to be able to control this Tariq St. Patrick. Well, maybe I can help. Did you know Jabari Reynolds? Did I get a phone call? I need you. You owe me. You need to talk. Talk? I'm gonna need a little quid from you before I can call. Ain't nobody safe. Especially you. Mm-hmm. So let's just start from the beginning. Monet is telling Tariq they've got a new connect. Of course, Kane already knows about that. We've seen in one of the trailers where Kane pops Tariq right across the face. So my question to you guys, my audience, how long before Tariq finds out about this Mecca? Because when Tariq finds out, we fully expect Tariq to do his homework, to figure out the background of Mecca, and be able to let us know what's what when it comes down to this Mecca character. Because right now, Mecca is the fly in the ointment, the chocolate in the cookie, the milk for the cookie you're going to dip. He's the ornament that goes on top of the Christmas tree for this season of power. And we've got to get more on this dude's story. What are his motivations? What the hell does he want? Matter of fact, I just seen the guy who plays Mecca He's on a Disney Christmas special I was just watching with my daughter, and he was looking more like Becca. He didn't look like a brother. He had no beard. He had a nice doobie on his head, looking like he's seen with Frank Sinatra doing this thing in a Disney movie. And up here, they got him looking menacing. So what do you guys think? So let me, let me tell you what some of the people's um, theories are. Steve Walton, do you think he's an undercover fed? Man, I don't know, man. I I don't know. Um, for this character, they've done a great job of disguising his background. Now, the fact that he, he knew Monet when they was kids, that don't change that he couldn't be a fed. That could still very well mean he's a fed. But to this point, I don't know. We'll have to see. And um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls coming to the stage, somebody you guys know and you run to him for all your tech news, he's back. It's that legend, Larry, living his best life. He's got on My Life Haters t-shirt. What's going on, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm hanging in there just doing my thing. Doing my thing. Just want to remind all those people out there, my life matters. And so does yours. So, you know, just make sure just make sure people out there represent. Exactly. So, Big Larry. I, I see we, you with the ghost hoodie on. Hey, man, you know you know how I do, man. I'm, I'm still banging and clanging. I'm banging <laughs> and I'm clanging. <laughs> so, Big Larry, how do you feel about this Mecca character on Power from what you've seen so far? What do you think? I mean, it looks like there's something there's something more that had gone on. It looked like maybe that was uh, the dude that that Monet had gotten down with before, uh, you know, before her husband. And um, I, I'm curious. 
I'm curious if maybe uh, what's his name is his son or something. You know, Ooh, Kane. Kane. Um, now we've had a little bit of discussion. Um, Courtney Kemp did an IG live, and I know exactly what you're gonna say, but I'm gonna tell you what she said. Muchella asked her a question. She responded to Muchella. Muchella. She Muchella asked her two questions. One of them was, "Is Kane Mecca's son?" And Courtney Kemp said, "No, Larry." I'll let you respond to that yeah. because I know what you're gonna. I know what you're gonna say. Courtney, I, Courtney be lying, you know. <laughs> Courtney lies. <laughs> Courtney, you know you lie. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not like she's going to tell us, oh, yeah, that's his dad. And let me go ahead and lay out the whole storyline for you. Man, she's so full of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I feel like there's something with him. Um, yeah. He could be one of, they, one of their fathers. Certainly could right. be one of their fathers. But I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. And in this coming episode, Larry, um, Kane is going to be telling Mecca about Tariq. Now, mm. if we can safely assume that Mecca is from New York because that's where Monet is from, correct, Larry? Right. And, they, and they've known each other since they were kids because they had that whole code thing since she was a kid because they, he even, they even made some, some comment about, I don't know how your dad found out it was you. I don't know how my dad found out it was you. So they've been doing this since before, you know, since before she was even, you know, out the out her parents' house. So right, right. Ladies Aww. and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's getting real tonight. It's getting no. hot. <laughs> we got the big homie one take, big dog in the building. Now, if you haven't subscribed to his channel, damn it, you're missing out. He goes IG live. I caught him the other day. I had to smash him up a little bit. <laughs> He's got a great channel. I know y'all are already following Larry. Be sure to subscribe to my big homie, One Take Big Dog. Big Dog, how you feeling tonight? Man, I'm good, man. I know there's going to be some interesting stuff going on tonight, man. <laughs> oh, One Take man. looks like he got a brand new camera, man. This stuff's over there looking glossy. Man, yeah, I'm man. on my phone, man. I actually use Word. my phone for once. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Your phone's looking real good. <laughs> Yo, that phone Appreciate you got, man. What, what you got? The, the, the um, S21 Ultra? Uh, oh, man. Don't do that, man. Come on, man. Ain't nothing but This ain't nothing but an XR, man. I ain't, I ain't, the XR yeah. is working what? for you. <laughs> yeah, <it's XR. laughs> Damn, bro. Well, you look 4K ish. For hey, real. Listen, it's better than my laptop. So I like, yeah. Uh, I tried it the other <laughs> night with BA. I said, I'm going to use my phone more often. Hey, hey bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're getting it in there. Now, one take do you watch Power? I do not watch Power. I do not mm. watch Power. I do not watch well, that, power. that means we're going to have to keep the Power part of this show pretty pretty quick so we can get on to the Hawkeye part of the show. Oh, so in, okay. <laughs> in closing, Larry, let me ask you this, Larry. Where do you think they're going to go in this next episode this Sunday? Well, it looks like they're setting it up for... Um, it looks like they're setting it up so that um, so that Zeke is going to get accused of murder and then it's going to become... Then it's going to become this sort of um, this thing between the family and and Tariq. It looks like that. It looks like that. This is this is what it looks like is going to happen. They're, it looks like they're setting it up so that Zeke's going to get accused of murder, and then Diana's going to figure out that that it was um, that it was um, Kane that that robbed him for their dope and swapped their dope out. And once he gets, once he's going to be back, he's going to be back on the outs again, or just about to be on the outs again. He probably will get on the outs again. Then he's going to be able to come back through. Sort of like the 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 hero in Shining Armor when he's gonna say, "Hey, I know a way to get the to get uh, Zeke out of this because I actually know who killed Jabari and I can give him up." And then he's gonna go and try and give up Tariq. But as we know, anybody who tries to give up Tariq gets blasted in the head. So it's just a matter of time before if Kane goes that route before he ends up dead. So, um, but I think that's where he's gonna go with it. I think he's going to try and set up he's well zeke's gonna end up getting have to look like he's gonna end up getting caught up in that and then it looks like that that uh kane's gonna try and set up Tariq at the end so okay. i can rock with that well having said that larry we'll rock with your preview and we'll move on to hawkeye because i got that clip larry sent to us we have a little personal group where we you know we do a little brotherhood 
Larry sent a <laughs> clip from India, and they hate Hawkeye. But before <laughs> before we get in, let me show Tressa C something. Let me show Tressa C something. Tressa I see Tressa C in the building. Shout out to you. I see a few other people play I've me, seen man. for a minute. Miss K, Alex, you know. Yeah, yeah. Tressa C trying to play. Tressa C talking about what happened to the Miami Dolphins. First of all, <laughs> I got Thanos <laughs> on top of Miami. I didn't move my Miami is still right here. See? I just don't have on the hat. Oh. There you go. So oh, Tressa, wow. you know, we, we still got Miami in the building. And one thing, Big Dog, before we, like, kind of deep dive into this whole thing, just tell me, how do you feel about Hawkeye so far from episode one through three? Uh, to me, Hawkeye feels – it's the most fun I've probably had with uh, the uh, the Marvel, Marvel shows. The really, most yeah, the I, most fun. Wow. Yeah, because I, I, I really like the groundedness of, of the show, and, like, I, I really feel like the – I'm enjoying the characters, even even the like the, the back and forth banter between the two, like the the the, the student teacher uh, element of it, like every, all that stuff to me just coming off great thus far, you know. Mm, okay, Larry. Yeah, I like that too. I'll be honest with you, I do like that back and forth with them right there. It's sort of like a um, it's sort of like a buddy film, but with a but with a gender differential and a in an age gap. You know, mm -hmm. right? So, right. normally it's just like two guys, maybe from different worlds, or maybe there's two guys that one's yeah. old, one's young. But this one, you have the whole old, young. You have the male, female. You have the rich, sort of not rich. I mean, it's not like he's poor, but he's definitely not balling like she comes. You know, she comes from real wealth. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of it's sort of fun to see all those dynamics play in, and uh, and on top of that, not not even just the fact that it's sort of like a buddy film. But she completely idolizes him. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and from everything that we've seen thus far, he has not disappointed her. You know, <laughs> he's pretty much as badass as she thought he was, and she's just completely smitten with him. And it's it's kind of fun to watch. Mm. Lady Virtue, this is for you. You know, we greatly appreciate these super chats, and I'm very grateful. So let me give you the Hollywood standard standing ovation. Very grateful. <laughs> Appreciate that. I like that, that man. Chat. I'm about to start robbing you guys from some of your clips. <laughs> I can put them up on mine when I do my little wine of winners. <laughs> hey, man. If you feel free, bro. You know, do like I did. Um, when B. Avery did his, I tried to find a remixed version of what he did. So if you can find a more remixed version of that, you right in the game, man. For me, um, Hawkeye, start, the first episode, you know, the critics had said it was kind of slow. It didn't bother me. I, I was kind of into it, and I came in this thing as someone who's not really a big fan of Hawkeye, who doesn't know his comic book lure the way I know some of the other ones. I'm familiar with Kate Bishop because she came later, but I didn't really know Hawkeye's as much as he, as hers. So, the, you know, I kind of came to this thing not knowing what to expect, and yeah. the first episode didn't bother me. Now, I was getting a little creeped out when Hawkeye first met Kate because... The, the, the energy kind of felt like it could have been, you know, it just was weird energy. But by the end of like, by the middle of the second episode, it started to go into what one take and Big Dog was saying, kind of a buddy, buddy, a grasshopper being taught by the mentor type deal. And it, it, it was almost as if Hawkeye started trying to teach his own child how to be the next Hawkeye. Because this right. girl is doing stupid stuff that you would expect a young teen to do. Yeah. She yeah. put on the damn Ronin suit, which is why he's in this mess right now. He was going home to Christmas with his family, done kissed his daughter, promised his son. And now that that suit has come up being worn by Kate Bishop, he's had to go back, save her, try to protect her. Mm -hmm. And in this very last episode, M. Pops Echo, who in the comics is the adopted daughter of Kingpin, and I know you both saw the section when her real dad was talking to the uncle and they didn't show the uncle face. Mm. That was Kingpin, if y'all right. ain't know. Mm. That was Kingpin. And the question I have for you now, Buente, are we going to see Kingpin next Got episode? Got to. We have to. I, well, I, I'm not going to say we're going to see him next episode. 
Because I, I kind of feel like they just, you know, they want to tease him. I, I, I already said it. We won't see Kingpin until literally the last shot of the show. We going to see <laughs> Kingpin somewhere in New York, top floor, looking out through that glass window, and just probably just <laughs> with this menacing look. And it's going to hook you hooked at that moment right there. Okay, but that's what we're oh. gonna see. Uh, what's we're gonna see Vincent in the, in all his glory? I hope he put on the white suit. I love the white suit. Okay, but mm. I know for I'm telling you, it's gonna be the last thing we see. It's gonna and, and the internet gonna go crazy because I know. But, I'm, wait, <laughs> wait a minute, one t- one one take one take one one take. Let me let me tell you something else. Now let me tell you something else. It, they can't. Which would be better? If we end with Kingpin, or if we end with Daredevil coming to team up with Kate Bishop, that would be dope. Oh, because wherever oh. Kingpin goes, there's two superheroes that follow. I just named one of them. Who's the other one? One take or Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Electra. No, Spider Man. What about Electra? Man, uh, nobody think about no. That's Spider Man all day. All day. Why y'all hate that Electra? All day. All day. All day. All day. She's she's there. She's there too. Right back, Jennifer Gardner. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. There you go. He got jokes. <laughs> that Jennifer oh, Gardner. She might come back me. and do it. <laughs> that she had to do a multiverse. A multiverse type thing. Gardner, she older than I am, man. They can't bring her back. She like looks that. young though. Man, she she look young. Young. you see what she did in that movie Peppermint? She still got it, man. I, no, she does. Look, she, I'm a fan. Peppermint I'm, was fun. I'm, I'm, I'm a yeah. fan. I'm I'm a fan. I'm just saying. Y'all know the MCU getting younger. Um yeah, I think yeah. I, I, and this one's for you, Lad. I think I told you I really never paid Haley Steinfeld any attention. Ooh. Ever. Mm-hmm. Didn't care for it, nothing. I love her as Kate Bishop. I, wow. I mean, yeah, she's, she's fun. She, right, right. Thank you. you t- I was getting ready to get my fingers and start using my word. I'm, she is really a trip yeah. on this show. Yeah. She's embodying someone who's a fan of the superhero, someone who's in this new generation, and someone who is conflicted by her parent who's rich. And she mm-hmm. don't really, per se, care for that. So talk about that a little bit, Larry. Yeah, I, I love that. That I mean, I love her character. She's she's just a lot of fun because she's, mm-hmm. like you said, she's young. She's sort of, um, I mean, she's inexperienced so that all of that comes through with some of the stuff that she does, like falling through the skylights on the <laughs> roof. You know, <laughs> just, just some of that craziness, some of the stuff, like she has the skills, she has the, mm-hmm. you know, she has the motivation. She has all of the, the, everything that's right about her, except for she just doesn't have, the experience yet and that mm. just comes from doing from doing the work um mm. i'll tell you one of my favorite scenes so far from this was when uh maya was in the room and she was asking she was asking uh clint who the ronin was mm-hmm. and she was and he said oh i killed him and I, and she was like no you didn't and i'm laughing because i'm like there's three ronins and they're all in the room at the same time and it was great yeah. <laughs> So one take, how, how how have you felt about Haley Steinfeld portraying Kate Bishop so far? Oh, I, I've loved it. I, I've mm-hmm. always, I've been a fan of hers for a while, though. You know, so when I heard she, uh, there was the thing, and I think I told you this before, is mm-hmm. that I didn't know Kate Bishop was a c- completely different character. I thought Kate Bishop was Hawkeye's daughter, you know. No, like, no. Yeah, I, I didn't know, mm-hmm. you know, and so then it, Cause when they cast it, uh, Hayden Steinfeld, I'm like, okay, that's kind of messed up to the girl who was all like in the role. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cold blooded, you know. But then, yeah, then I think then y'all told me like, no, this is a pretty different character. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. it's cool. I, I'm already a fan of her, and like, she just brings such life to the show. She is yeah. just like, okay, this girl, she's good. Like Larry said, she's good. Man, she it's just like great. she just still kind of don't know what she's doing. Like yeah. she, she, she will trip over her own like shoes at like at any moment. But at the same time, she'll get herself out of it. And, like she's gonna make you laugh with her. Uh, she, she's definitely like Gen Z because <laughs> like the stuff. Oh, she's, dang. When she's talking about like, okay, we gotta get we gotta get your marketing together. It's yeah, like, man, yeah, was, yeah. I don't even want to be in this <laughs> world. You only talk about my marketing, put me in a big blue suit. No, I, I, I love everything. Hey, this time, best breaking to this world. 
I have too. I mean, and her demeanor, I, I just like I, her. De she never gets frazzled per se. Like I, I, I love that demeanor. I love the, I love the demeanor she's bringing to the character, yeah. as well as everything you and Larry have both said about the Gen Z. She is mentioning the Hawkeye. Look, man, you need a brand a little bit. Did y'all see the part where she brought out the traditional comic outfit that he wore oh, yeah, in the yeah. Avengers cartoon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, Larry, can we get? Is he gonna wear that? Any? Are we gonna oh, see that? He has to at least once, man. At oh, least once. Not the mask. He's not putting on that mask. You don't think he's gonna put on the mask? No, he, he got to put on the mask, mask one time. Yeah. He got to put on the mask. He has yeah. to do it one time. Maybe you know. He'll it's, come down the chimney with glee or something when he go home <laughs> and put the mask on. It's going to be the same as Wolverine when he looked at saw the suit at the end of uh, the Wolverine. He's yeah. just going to look at him. He's he going to put on everything else, but he's not putting on those big wings on this on his face. Man. Look, I'll, yeah. take that. I'll take that. You know, if he put it on, if they'll just have a scene or maybe she give it to him as a gift when they get to the last episode to say, this is how you, you know, whatever. It's how you can market yourself. I'll take that. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I thought that um, at first when I was starting to watch the first two episodes, I was like, man, she's really just a scene stealer. And then I realized she's not stealing scenes. They, These are all, they have designed these scenes for her. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like right now, they, they're calling the show Hawkeye, but it's really not Hawkeye's show. It's really Kate Bishop's show. And in the way it seems like they're going... They're really setting up all the young Avengers, like you know, because you have they've already introduced what Wicked and Speed. Mm -hmm. Then they introduced uh, Yelena from you know from Black Widow. Now we're getting mm -hmm. Kate Bishop. They're just bringing all the young folks in and just phasing them in, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. So part of me was thinking like, oh, she's just straight scene uh, scene stealing, but I really think they're designing all this stuff so that she's just that much fun and witty and you know in these scenes because. I mean, not only they did they write it like that, but she really does perform well. She is yeah. she is fantastic. I mean, I, yeah, I didn't she, have she any is, feelings man. towards her one way or the other. Me neither. I was completely indifferent to her. Me and neither. I'm glad I was. I'm glad that I did not have any positive or negative feelings and went in with expectations. I just went in with nothing. And she has she has made me more than happy with her character. She is okay. just a lot of fun. To to be honest with both of y'all. After the first episode, I started tuning in, not for Hawkeye, but for Kate Bishop. I came front. I, 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 yeah. I, I expressed to y'all in that in the DMs. I was like, man, this chick, I'm, in, I'm enjoying where she's going. But now I got to ask y'all, there's another character we ain't talked about. That we wait, know wait, before you go. Role. Yeah, go for I just want to point out, this is, a second, this is a second Marvel joint where they've had a deaf character. Marvel's really branching out into the whole... You know, I don't want to call them disabled. I don't know what the appropriate word phrase is, but they've gone. This is what the second character now that they've had that's been actually deaf. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. From uh, the girl from Eternal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That I mean, Marvel's doing their thing, trying to reach out with inclusiveness and um yeah. and, and putting it in a way. But with Hawkeye and him being deaf, there's got there's a reason why they put that in there. Uh, and I think that eventually they're going to get to hard of hearing. This, yeah, they, they're going to get to it. They're going to get to it. You know, he kept saying, I'm not deaf, I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> but there, there's another character who has a disability that you know they're going to do something with. And I'll show it to you and let you go with it, big dog. We got my homie, the Labrador, the golden oh, yeah. retriever that's missing his eyeball. One <laughs> Bro, listen, listen. I kind of feel like you're going to throw me alive, and I'm going to blow it, but we're going to see. <laughs> one take, that's what I'm doing. What we, where are we going to go with this puppy, one take? Where are we going with the dog missing the eyeball? Man, I have no idea. I don't even know why he came to me with this one. For the, this dog don't even have a name yet. I, I'm trying to see what they doing. Listen, I'm, I'm confused on a couple things that's even happened with this dog, because I think this dog got some kind of special power because I'm thinking back to the first episode <laughs> when Kate left the dog at the house. The dog had just came off the street and he was dirty. He was dirty as I don't know what. She come back. He clean as hell. I'm like, wait a minute. You took a shower or something? You got real comfortable? You know, uh, put on some cologne. I don't know what's going on with him. I, okay. I, I, okay. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me drop this on you, Kate. And, and Larry, um, you both remember... Um, what was it? Guardians of the Galaxy 1? Mm -hmm. 
You remember the collector had all these animals collected? Oh, no. Mm. No. Do y'all remember a golden retriever that had a thing around his neck? Yes, mm. I do. And did it look something like this? I'm going to have to go back and look now. I got to. I oh, got man. To. Do, do y'all remember the doll? I do remember yeah, I the doll. I don't, but I'm going to have to go back and look now. Okay. I, I would, oh, I never put two and two together. I would have never, never put that together. I was just, I because when I saw him, I was just thinking, like, in the comics, it was like the dog came in when I think he, I think Hawkeye was getting jumped by like the tracksuit mafia or something. And, and, and the dog jumped in and, and attacked him, attacked the other dudes. And, and he got really hurt in the process and Hawkeye took him to a vet and they were like, sorry, there's nothing we could do. And he basically was like, Oh, you're going to fix this dog and got gangster on. I think he, I don't even think he was Hawkeye. I think he might've been Ronan at the time, but he was, he was Ronan in, in the series you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and when Marvel, if you guys you guys are into the thing the way I am, Marvel introduces pets like this, they're going to use them. They're going to well, use The last them. time we had a cat show up, it turned up to be a dog on flurkin. Oh, so right. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. right. Who knows what this dog's going to turn out to be? <laughs> but the, the, the thing about this dog um if 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 they try to tie this dog to the same one from the collector, this dog's got powers. This, this, this is not mm. just some regular dog. This dog is like crypto. Um, right. So Ooh. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to tie this dog the way they would to, to that, because this is really kind of a story where no one really and truly has any quote unquote superpowers yet. Mm -hmm. But the the connection to the connection to um, having special needs such as being blind, such as being deaf. It's all just basically pointing your way to Daredevil. I mean, I'll just connect mm. those dots for y'all. It's all just pointing your way to Daredevil because Echo trained with Daredevil at one point in time in the comics. Remember, mm. she, she, she's deaf. Who else is deaf and blind? Yeah. So, excuse me, blind. And, and she trained with him. So I'm thinking, y'all, um, we have to see Daredevil at some point in time in the series before it's over with. We have to see him. We have you think to, so? We, they have to tease them. Maybe we don't see them, but they're gonna have to tease them. They. Have I think. They, I think we're gonna hear about it. I think. Okay. I think. I think that's what we're gonna have. We're gonna hear about. Oh, they got the. What about the guy in the red suit? They're gonna. I right. guarantee they're gonna say something like that. You're now, gonna now, have after, to do this, that. The next series after this one is is She Hulk, right? Is it She Hulk? Um, one take. Is is it She Hulk? Yeah, that, I think that's the one. Uh. It's gotta be. It, it's gotta be. Yeah. It's yeah, gotta, it's be. gotta be. Are we gonna get a? Are we gonna get a tie-in at the end of this? You think? Probably not. I don't think. I think that's gonna be its own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably like, that's not. That's dealing with like you know more you know, power oriented. Like to be to be honest with you, if they wanted to tie in She Hulk, they could have tied it in with um, uh, Captain America series that they did with Falcon. That's where they could have. Mm. And they and and to be honest with you, they kind of did. A little bit, um, but not in totality. But mm. they kind of tied it in a little bit with your girl that came in. Um, the Louis Dreyfus chick, her character is going to have some tentacles in where they're going to go with um, She Hulk. But that oh, was kinda, right. okay. Okay. that was kind of their little tie in. So let me ask you guys about this cat right here. And I'll go with you, like, what the hell is up with this dude? I mean, I don't this know dude, if the dude's he, mustache he playing, is on point. Man, that has the mustache. best mustache I've seen in a long time. Man, F that <laughs> ravishing Rick Rude mustache. He up here, he is up here playing Kate Bishop Mama. Oh, he's yeah. already rich. He don't care that his, his buddy just died. He's trying to get the Ronin suit. He's got the sword now. Larry, what's up with this dude? What, what what's what's the deal? Yeah, this dude, this dude is not anywhere near clean. I mean, first of all, we know because he's already showing up at that bootleg auction. And then when Kate tried to stab him in the face and he parried, you know, she was like, oh, yeah, I see what's up. She was mm -hmm. like, because you should have been dead right now, you know. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I mean, he probably did kill his uncle, you know. Yeah. And um, I want to know, I want to know if, um, I want to know if Hawkeye's going to take his Ronin sword back, you know. Yeah. Well, see, this is the thing, Larry. We don't know how tough this dude is. Oh, um, we know he's tough. We, he's tough because he, 
I mean, he handled. I mean, we know that Kate Bishop is is like a straight up G, and he handled her like nothing. He was up there pretending, and I mean, you can't pretend like that unless you were so good that you already know what someone's gonna do, and then you can just go ahead and 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 you know move a you know a half second ahead so it can seem like you're letting them win. We know that the dude is that good already. No. Yeah. So what what you think on the um one take? And this happened at the end of this last episode. He yeah. got a knife to Hawkeye when they supposed to have been sneaking in, stealing passwords and what may have it. He puts the knife. And this this, I mean, excuse me, the sword. This is Hawkeye's sword, by the way. I no, that boy Jack. I don't know. I'm I'm kinda I don't want to just give I feel like that's the easy thing. Is, I, I know he probably bad and I know he probably Think he's playing Kate's mama? Mm -hmm. I think she got the ups on him, though. I think Kate's yeah, mama. Yeah, because yeah, Kate's mom runs that security company. She's no dummy. She's not yeah, a dummy. I, yeah, I just don't. Man. I don't see her him being able to get over her. And I feel like that's just too straightforward. I hope y'all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk to you about this mama and everything I've seen this mama in. She always played a little ditzy. Because she was in Bates Motel. She was a little ditzy. And she was a little um, um, recluse when it comes to her kids. Mm -hmm. And she's and she's continuing that same acting style right here with Kate Bishop. Y'all, I mean, look, I want y'all sure, y'all sure that it's, it's too easy for them to let this dude be a nutcase. Um, he's going to use the mama security business for his own nefarious deeds. Y'all help me out, man, please. Because right now, he's acting like he's a bad guy. What's the deal? What you think, Larry? I think I think he is going to be a bad guy, and um, I think the mom recognizes it. I think the mom is playing dumb because <laughs> she's trying to figure out what he's doing, what he's up to. Maybe she's like, "Well, the only way to get close to this dude is to get close to this dude," and. Even though she I mean, seems like she in love, off that way, but I think it, that's where it's, I don't think the mom is stupid like that. Where she's just gonna get played by this dude. I think she. I think she either she knows she knew from the beginning, or she figured it out, and then she's continuing to play along so that she can so she can do what she's gonna do. And um, I think that Kate's gonna she's gonna eventually have to tell Kate. Kate's gonna think the mom is just getting played, and I think eventually the mom's gonna have to say something. It's gonna have to be like, "I know what's up. Now back off." You know. Mm. Mm, so, okay. what you think? I think take? something's gonna happen. Uh, I'm I'm almost with the, I'm, I'm almost right there with you, but I think he's bad and I think she's worse. I think. It's oh, gonna, really? I, I think the mom's gonna be the, the really? head honcho. I think she's what? the one. Yeah, no. I don't. I, 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 no, I'm, no I'm telling you. I, 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 I gotta, like the moms. I don't want no her to way. be bad. No I way. like the moms. I think it's gonna. Look, be, I think that just. One take. Well, you got people in the comments right with mom is very fishy. Look, yeah. look, ah. look. Ah. <laughs> I think, what? hey, I think she she got another side to it we haven't seen. I, I know it's gonna be something where like, oh, your father left, uh, your father died. I, I have to like step up and like she gonna you know she gonna make excuses before she got security firm. She's gonna she gonna be on game to everything that's been going on, and he gonna mm. think he he got her. And she gonna show him they're like, okay, it's tired. I'm tired of playing with you. You thought you had me. Let me let me show you what a real at. Okay, I'm now, telling you, man, this scared me, man, because like I said, the <laughs> mo the mom never plays an evil person. She's always recluse. She's always a little ditzy. And okay. to see her come out and be um, a villain, you know, maybe a psychopath or something, my heart might be broke over that one take. <laughs> I, 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 this this is what I could see happening. I could see them making us for like an episode or two, making us think that she's a villain. Right. And then like at the end of one of those episodes, like Kate goes and catches her mom doing like some nefarious deal or something. It's some shady looking character. And then when the person steps out of the shadow, it's like Nick Fury. And then she's like, Oh snap. Moms is in deeper than we even knew, you mm. know? Or Ooh. or it could be Ooh, Maria that's Hill. One. That's a good it could one. be or Maria Hill. It ain't gotta necessarily be Nick Fury, it could be Maria Hill. 
That yeah, that's somebody we all recognize as well. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Uh, hey, I like that. It could be somebody like that. I'm Larry. still going. She evil. Watch. She evil. <laughs> I don't. I don't trust. Her. Let me tell you I something. Don't trust her. If, if she go evil, I'm going to be the first one in that little group we in that's going to send a message to one take, and it ain't going to be nice. I can't, I, I, my little heart can't take this mess, man. Like, I'm I telling you. Oh, just, 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 just look at that picture again. You can like no, like there is no way she's that dance and he's just come on now, come on now, <laughs> come on now. One take, I'm going off the strength of she wants love, man. You know mm. she, she she's missing the love in her life. She wants to be held and caressed. Oh, oh. And, you know, in the hood we say that thing wet and hot. <laughs> that's what we say in the hood. And that's all she wants right now. And she's blinded by that love. Or are you telling me this is all a facade? It's all a facade. She done had oh. love. She want power with her. She done had that already. Larry, she stop this dude, love. man. Stop, stop this dude. What the <laughs> Oh, man. It's no. different now. She all oh. about the power. Okay. Oh, she, my she God. She head honcho. I'm telling you, watch. We gonna see but, how cold she but, is. But one take, if she's really that cold, where is that going to leave her with her daughter? Sacrifices must be made. I, I would no, not be surprised. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I just would not be surprised if it turns out that the mom is like a contractor for Shield, and and she's been and she's been working for the good guys all along. That just would not surprise me at all because she's a secure. She has a security firm. She seems like she's probably on on you know on the up and up. And Marvel likes to do their little bits of misdirection, making her seem like she's just sort of the ditzy chick that doesn't fit, know anything. You don't run a big old security agency like that, a security organization, and, and you're a dummy. That's what I'm no. saying. I just think I'm just on the God opposite man. end of it. God I'm on the opposite end. Damn it. D Dwayne got your back one take. Let me read what he said before I give him a special. Daredevil got four appearances in Hawkeye, Spider-Man, She-Hulk, and Echo. This dude know what he's talking about, one take. This dude be on it. The rumor is Cozy killed Echo's day from orders from kingpin he's talking about some of the comic lure so basically he's basically telling us that he's definitely expecting to see daredevil because daredevil has crossed over with hawkeye spider-man she hope echo and what's one thing that all these people have in common one of the main villains that they've all had to deal with is kingpin, kingpin. And, and for that my my brother let me give you a special thank you i'll give you uh Watch. Let me I, see. I'll give you B. Avery's favorite one. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. Okay, baby, let me tell you something. If a whore ain't paying y'all bills, that's the last thing y'all should be worried about. I appreciate that, big <laughs> homie. Uh-oh. I, I, something just came to me. Uh-oh, go just for it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, y'all remember how I said the last thing we were going to see was Kingpin? Mm-hmm. The person who's going to be talking to Kingpin is the mother. Mm. I like that. I can see that, Larry. Mm. I can see that. I can, yeah, see, I can that. see that. I can oh. see that because she'd probably be worried about her daughter. Um, mm -hmm. and, and with the surveillance that this woman is doing, you know she's got to know about Echo. It, I, can, I can see that one, Tate. I can see that. Okay. <sighs> Come on. Don't let it be. That could be it, Larry. That'd be a good one. It got to happen, Larry. It got to happen, man. But, I don't want her to be bad, man. I like the mom. I, I was going to say, but Larry, the mama don't have to be bad just because she's talking to Kingpin. She That's could true. be She could be going to Kingpin to just say, hey, look, somehow or another, my daughter Kate got involved with your niece, Echo, and I just wanted to come to you, parent, basically the parent, and just say, what can we do to rectify the situation, get her up out of this situation? And mm. Kingpin going to grab her by her little head and say, we oh. have to kill we got to kill somebody. But Kingpin ain't a nice guy. Man, Kingpin gonna ask for, I need a percentage of your company. You know Kingpin, he's still a businessman. He's still a businessman now. Uh, he ain't like, hey, let me get about, let me get about 45. Oh, I need so, about 45 percent so, of profits. So basically the way, the way Dwayne just, um, just talked about how Daredevil goes into all these lures, if you know Kingpin, you know he has his, his main scientist, Alexander Smythe. Is it true that he's supposed to be in She-Hulk? Anyone y'all seen that? Mm -mm. He's got to come. He's got to come soon. Y'all both know who I'm talking about. The guy he he's uh, rides in a wheelchair 
he does all the size experiments and stuff like that for Kingpin. Yeah, I, I remember from uh, the little animated series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's yeah. actually he's in the comics, and um, I can see him. I can see him being in this thing, and he did some experiments. And you remember from they they teased this story in Spider Man the comics, where he wound up turning into this 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 thing. This glob that winds up whenever you throw energy at him, he could absorb it and project it right back at you, because he ran a bad experiment. So, I could see them bringing that into the um, Disney Plus TV series. Yeah, I, have him see, in here. I, I think that would be. I think honestly, I would see that more in probably like She Hulk. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like I, I want to know when we're gonna get Howard the Duck. We're not. We're not. We're just not. We need we're not getting. We, we're not getting them. If they ain't going to bring back T'Challa, why in the hell they going to bring out Howard the Duck? <laughs> Howard the Duck never went away. Uh, yes, he did, man. Back. He's not coming back, Larry. Let him go. Let, <sighs> let, let him go. I got a story for you, Larry, and one take. I just want to get y'all opinion. Larry I brought this to my attention. So MCU has done all these um, Disney Plus TV shows. You've seen WandaVision. we now got Hawkeye. You seen Falcon, Winter Soldier, and you also saw Loki. All right. Larry found this story right here, my people, from the Indian Express. It says Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> With the mediocre quality of MCU's Disney Plus shows, has Avenger fatigue finally set in? Larry, is this mm. your show? I'll let you start it out based on that one question they posed. How are you feeling about what they're saying? Man, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, man, there's a lot of people out there that are really tired of the superhero movies. They're tired of the superhero genre. And I know there's a lot of kids that like it. And that's part of the thing. There's always a new set of kids coming up and they're they're just enamored by superhero stuff. But as far as adults, I think there's a lot of people out there that are like, I've seen enough. Like the fans, the people who love the comics like us. I think we're all for it. We're like, give us more. We can keep, we can watch a superhero movie every month. We're good with it. But I think for a lot of the other people, they just want to go back to watching a war movie or a, or a rom-com or something. I think there's a lot of people who are tired of the superhero movies. And mm. I think they really have to be careful. Luckily, luckily for Marvel, there hasn't really been much good on the, on the uh, DC side. To help, you know, to, to help with the this dude, uh, the every, over there. This dude, this every dude, every even though every time they put man. something out, it really does it, this, it exacerbates all the superhero fatigue because their movies are really just so bad. Oh but, my lord! This uh, you know what? Oh lord, <laughs> Larry, you you was do doing okay. I always have to remind people one take. Everybody think I'm a Marvel guy, but one take, I'm a duck, so you can see it again. You already see I'm a duck one more time. What's that behind my shoulder? That say DC. Uh, DC. Right there. Oh. That says DC. And Larry, every chance he gets, every. the only thing Larry, the only thing he won't bash is that animation. And, and their animation even, is fire. Man, God. they can just stop making live action movies oh, and put God. all their attention Man. in the animation right there. Oh, yeah. I'm with not, the exception, with, with the not. exception of of Wonder Woman, if they can get Gal Gadot and they can get some better, like you know what they should do? They should take like the whole Wonder Woman thing. What's her mm -hmm. name that did the last one? What's her name? Was it Patty? Something? Patty, Jen Patty, Patty Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah, Pete, Patty Jenkins. They should take her, set her in a room somewhere, shut the door, mm -hmm. and just leave her there, and then go get like James Gunn or something. And let him direct a, a, a Wonder Woman movie. That would be dope. At the very, at the very least, even if they don't get him for that, they should get James Gunn for uh for Aquaman because Aquaman has that sort of funny, silly, you know, sort of uh just sort of over the top humor that 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 uh that he did with Guardians, and that's I think I think his style would match really well with um. You know, with uh, what's his name for for Aquaman? But I think they should do something more with Wonder Woman. Like maybe if they don't get him, maybe they should get like what's her name that did like uh, um, what was that? What was the movie that 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 military movie with Jen with Jeremy Renner? Um, the one where he played the bomb expert. It was a it was a, a woman that directed it. I think she Zero won an Oscar for it. Huh? Is that Zero Dark, Dark Thirty? Yeah, I think it was Zero. No, it was a Zero Dark. No, no. Yeah, it might have been Zero Dark Thirty. 
It might have been. I have to look it up. Okay. But like, get her. So it, it needs to be like it needs to be grittier. It needs to be. It needs to be grittier and 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 more excitement. Like the way they did the last one was just dumb. It was just he, dumb. Larry want the Larry want the he wants the, the the way they do their animation. He wants that on the big screen. He wants that yeah. dark. Dark. Man, think about that photo they have put out with Wonder Woman when she was back. The sepia tone photo where she was holding the dude's head. Holy crap! Can you imagine if they had that style in the movies? Oh, that would have been dumb. Not doing it. It. Not, not doing it, Larry. Yeah. Not doing it. They they trying to market to children. They not doing that. But oh, one take, how do you feel about what the this, hurt locker? This, That's what Jay Jay Moore hurt said. Locker. The, the hurt locker. locker. Yeah, yeah, I knew. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about what they're saying in the Indian Express um, one take? I don't feel like that's it at all. I, I, listen, how, we all know Hawkeye is probably one of the least popular uh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Avengers. You know, so I don't think <laughs> they keep a lot on of, making references to it in the series. Yeah, like we all <laughs> yeah. we all know yeah. that. So a lot of people, mm-hmm. I, a lot, the trailer didn't get a lot of people. No, nope. like it's not a lot of exposure. Not like crazy. Nope. Powers mm-hmm. and stuff going on, it's really grinding, which I think a lot of us want to see. But some people are like, oh, okay, it's, it's Hawkeye. How, how much do I really care about it? I didn't care about him in the first Avengers. A lot of people would have preferred if he died in Infinity War. Like, yeah, oh, like that's, yep. that's pretty much where we at. So, no, I don't, I don't think Hawkeye, and I think the show thus far has been the most consistent in his first three episodes more than any of the other ones. So I, I think people yeah, oh get consist as far as the, M- the more than more than Loki. Yes, don't forget you, Loki episode. I think it was episode three, the one with the train. Larry, know what I'm talking about? The one with the train. Yeah, that, that it, it took a, it took quite the dip. That was episode thing, three. Was, was that episode three? That was episode. I thought that was four. Was that episode? Be- because it was episode two. They start talking about your boy going with the Kawasaki and all that. Remember, you remember that, Larry? Episode uh, two. Yeah. It was episode two. He was talking about the Kawasaki, and then episode three was when they showed us that timeline with the the rain, the multiverse, and all. So I think it was episode right. four. Oh, it might. It might. St- yeah. First three episodes. I have to go back and watch that one part. I have to watch that again. Yeah, I think I still think the first three episodes of uh, Hawkeye being the most consistent. But okay. here's the thing that's different about Hawkeye. I think Hawkeye is something that that much more than Loki reaches across the you know the uh, the generations where people that are older and younger can both enjoy it. Like I use my niece as a barometer for some of these shows. She watched like the first episode, maybe like the first ten minutes of the, of the next episode of Loki. She didn't like it. She just stopped watching. She was like, "Uncle, we want something else." Now, mind you. She loves Marvel stuff. I mean, we just drove cross country from here to Colorado. And for like those 28 hours, she did nothing but sit on the phone and watch Marvel movies over and over. And she must have watched Civil War like three times in a row, you know? Hey, and, and she's, we a good, she's a good one, Colorado. Larry. <laughs> she's a good one, Larry. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can rock with a sister that want to watch it three times. <laughs> you know, we watched Hawkeye. She was so excited. She was screaming at the TV. My her grandfather didn't say, "Calm down, calm down," because she was so excited. But Loki, I tried to get, I tried to get her to watch Loki on the way on the way home. She didn't even want to watch it. You know, um, so I mean, it, it's it's a lot to go from the movie to the TV show. It's not the same feel. I, I mean, and in ter- I, I in terms of what they said in that report, Larry, I dug up um, a poll that they did. February popcorn flicks. Are you one of y'all ever heard of the group, the organization called Popcorn Flicks? I feel like I have. Yeah. They they polled, they did they did a sample poll of 50,000 people and asked them, are they experiencing superhero fatigue? Now here are the parameters of this poll. It was 50,000 people, and the age range was from 15 up to 55. Okay. <laughs> it was 35% women. And then the rest was all men. Only 15% of those people said they're having superhero fatigue out of 50,000 people. 15%. Their overall narrative was they don't mind the superhero genre if at times it doesn't feel like a superhero movie. And Mm. Marvel has been real good about sometimes making things not feel like Hawkeye right now. 
it doesn't feel as much as a superhero movie as it feels, you know, an action, kind of an action um, dialogue growth movie in my, with Hawkeye, in my opinion, on his TV series. So that was the yeah. response from 50,000 people in February. So I don't think we're experiencing superhero fatigue, per se. I just think that some people are fatigued with bad stories. Yeah, and I, I feel like, <laughs> and, and this is something, I think we all talked about it before, is that at some point, and, and, and I feel like we're getting closer to that point, you have a lot of characters, so you're going to have to start doing things different. You're going to have to yeah, start yeah. giving up. You're going to have to start making superhero like shows or movies, but based on like rom-coms, coming-of-age films, horror movies, stuff like that. And I think right. that they kind of, Marvel did kind of start that. I, I feel like with the uh, with WandaVision, WandaVision, okay, yeah, WandaVision yeah. felt like a sitcom, you know. It yeah. did. So it, it did. If it, it, yeah. it started like if it, if it continues to evolve like that, I don't think we don't. They don't have where like the superhero genre has too much to worry about. Well, think about it like this: They done the same thing with one of the worst movies in Marvel. They turned Ant Man <laughs> into a heist movie. Don't do <laughs> like, that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. We ain't gonna do that. <laughs> we ain't gonna do that. They, they turn uh, they turn Ant Man into a heist movie. We ain't gonna talk movies. about the worst war movie we've seen in, in Captain America. Oh man, uh, look, man, it's, <laughs> it's it's either it's either the first Captain America or the second Ant Man. Which one you want to pick? Wait, be? Ca- the, the first Captain, Ant-Man. Captain America, the first Avenger. Yep, yeah, the first Avenger. That boy I was care, great. I ain't care for that. Nope. <sighs> Snooze fest. Yeah. No, Snooze. no. And, and let's not let's not also forget that you like Thor the Dark World. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean that was another yeah. great one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not even. I'm yeah. not even going there. Yeah, it, it was I'm, nothing wrong. It was nothing wrong with Thor the Dark World. Except the only for thing everything. That, no, except what was everything. wrong with it was Natalie Portman. That's what was wrong with it. That's we what gonna was wrong blame with. that on Natalie Portman and not absolutely. Who, Absolutely. I'll tell you the thing is Absolutely. though, every time I see uh what's her name? Um what's her name? Cat didn't what, what's her name? The the one that plays Darcy. Uh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't even see I don't even see Natalie Portman on screen. Okay. I like I her. I don't too. see her. She Darcy oh, is, is the best. She's I mean, I've loved that woman since I saw her on that on Two Broke Girls years ago. She mm-hmm. is she is fantastic. And <laughs> I mean, she literally makes Natalie Portman disappear on the screen. Yeah, that, that she couldn't save that movie though. I don't no, think have, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. She if all they had to do was remove Natalie Portman, the movie would have been it would have been a seven for everybody. That's all they had to do. A Get rid of seven. <laughs> A seven? <laughs> Hold on, so you remove that important and become a seven. So where's that now? Like a three? <laughs> like, like what, are, like what are we doing? Okay, well, we can definitely agree on this. Toxic Key said the worst was, was Iron Man 3. Yeah, that was that was not a good movie. That that, it, that was bad. Yeah, I that was it. not a good movie. And and let me give you something for that super chat because you absolutely that was not a good movie. Let, <laughs> let me give you this one. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's I appreciate boy. that. Let me and also let me shout out, ladies and gentlemen. Do y'all know that in the comment section there are some damn good YouTubers in there too, alongside us? So make sure you like the video, subscribe to One Take. He's he's building his brand. Subscribe to Larry, who's crossed fifty thousand subscribers. But we've got the big homie J hey. Mo in the building, coming hey, through doing doing sports. We got Moochella who hang with the fellas in the building. Moochie. Hey. And we also got that sneaky, where she at? Miss K with Rewind. <laughs> oh, sneaky cell. Everybody is in the video description. Please check them all out. And fellas, before I get you out of here, I just want to get some predictions from you guys. Um, what we're going to see next week, Larry, on Hawkeye? What we're going to see? Um, whew, next week, let's see. Man. That's 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 tough. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna learn more about what the moms is up to. I think next week is gonna be probably more focused on the story with the mom and uh and her fiance. Mm-hmm. And and we're gonna get to learn a little bit more about that relationship and what's going on. I think we might get I think they're gonna do some of that Marvel misdirection where we're gonna be led to think the mom is bad, but I think we're gonna get into some of that. Um yeah, I 
I don't know. Maybe we'll get to learn more about the dog. Hopefully we do. Oh, you know, Lord. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. And I've kind of like just been I've kind of just been like not trying to overthink this series because I've been having so much fun with it, just going into it, not knowing what's going to happen at all. Mm -hmm. And when I just when I just show up, I'm just surprised and happy and having fun with it. So gotcha. Hey, I'm with that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our um, program announcement, J-Mo is going live as soon as I get off. So please go over there and check him out. And I would be remiss if I didn't check out and let you guys check out my little brother, B. Avery, who is right now sleeping, but still up there somehow mm -hmm. another clicking his button to show us some love while he's getting rest. <laughs> let me tell y'all something. The hardest working man in Hollywood right now is B. Avery. He's doing TV shows. He's doing movies. He has a very phenomenal hot guest that he does his power reviews for. So be sure to go and check B. Avery out. His link is in the description, too. Man, one B. Take. Avery would be up at 4 o'clock in the morning running streaming tests. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. The dude, the dude y'all, if y'all only knew how hard that dude oh, goes, y'all got to show wow. that man some love. He be going I don't hard. think he sleeps, man. I think, I think he runs off of, like... He must run off of like uh, Red Bull and, and Gatorade or something. I don't know and, what he runs off of. He and, doesn't and, sleep. And the other thing is, man, he lifts. And when you lift the way he lifts, you definitely need some rest. So, I, you know, I just, I'll be checking on y'all. If I don't hear from y'all after about four days, I start putting out APBs, figuring out what the <laughs> hell is going on. That's what I'll be doing. So, one take, where do you think we're going uh, with this next episode of Hawkeye? Okay, y'all gonna have to follow me a little bit. Oh, oh boy, here we go. We about to get in trouble, Larry. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is that me? Yeah, you in a Marvel movie right now? You know? That can't be me. Yeah, that's <laughs> you. You in the multiverse? <laughs> Come on, Larry. They coming for? They coming for? Oh, they coming. I, I, I don't know where that's coming from. They they coming oh, for? Oh, that's great. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> oh okay. man! I don't know. Listen, listen. Oh man! I did not know what I was coming from. Oh, that man. is funny. Woo. Oh, oh my! my. Oh, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what are we talking? We talking about the predictions? Yeah, yeah, You're right. Predictions okay, for Hawk, okay. The next episode man, of Hawkeye. I don't know what's going on in here, man. I'm a little <laughs> freaked out right now, but uh. <laughs> Quick predictions. I do think uh, Kay's going to kind of like explain that like Hawkeye was just like helping her with something. We are going to see more of like the mom and Jack's relationship and it's still going to kind of feel like Jack is going to think he's playing her a bit. Now, this is something I, I also think is important. Uh, Echo, uh, we know that like the, uh, the tracksuit mafia, one of the, one, of the, one of the guys right under Echo was like questioning her like, hey, right. your father always put the, the, the crew first. Now, I do think there's going to be like a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a, a disconnection between her and them mm -hmm. and to the point where I think they're going to try to betray her. What? Yeah. Mm. But, but Kingpin ain't going to get word of it and and none of that's going to fly. No. Mm. Mm -mm. In, in the comments, Kingpin loved Echo now. Yeah. He loved, he yeah. loved his daughter now. Um, and... And let me ask y'all one thing before I get y'all out of here. I, I you, think that dude, I'm sorry, Lamont, I think that dude that he's talking about, I think that's her cousin because I could have swore he referred to uh, Kingpin as his uncle. So hmm. I think he did. So I think hmm. that might be her cousin. Okay. Now, now, do you guys think we're going to get a scene where Kingpin actually fights somebody? Because in the comics, he's not just a big fat dude. He actually has like a little bit of strength. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you think we'll get a scene where he snaps somebody net? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I still think they're saving. I still think they're gonna save it. They're gonna save because it. I, I was like, if anybody, it would have been the guy who's trying to like, you know, get Echo spot. I think he would have been the person that Kingpin like took care of. Because like he would, I think he was gonna try to go above her and be mm -hmm. like, hey, your, uh, your daughter's tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like right. she's not putting everything. I, I think I should be in. I should like take her spot and kingpin you know, like, you know how he is gonna kinda like smooth talk it and then we're gonna see him like smash his head into a bunch of little pieces. Do do either one of y'all remember the fight Kingpin had with Daredevil in I think it was season one. Might have been season two. 
him and Daredevil got into a fisticuff. He beat Daredevil and knocked the daggone mask off of him. Yeah. Oh, okay. I th- I think that I think they're gonna end it up with I think that Kingpin is gonna is gonna fight with Kate and, and Hawkeye. He's gonna have he's gonna be whooping them both. He's about ready to take them both out, and out of the shadows is gonna come Luke. Luke Hell and Jessica are gonna come out of the shadows. <laughs> and they're gonna and right Hell there, they're gonna fade to black, so we're not gonna get to see it. I'll bet, I'll bet the house on that one. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> I, I, I would buy I would buy you if they Larry, I would bet you right now 10 shares of that stock I just told you to buy that's gonna be a thousand wow. next year and not doing that. They're oh, not, wow. they're oh. not, but I wanna see it, but I wanna see it. They're not. Oh wow. yeah, not. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe to these men's channel. They put out great work. Subscribe to J-Mo. Subscribe to B. Avery. Subscribe to Miss K. And that's going to do it for me. I will Moochie ask too. these fellas. And Moochie, too. Can't forget about the sister. Before we get out of here, one take. What you got going on in your channel over the weekend that people can look forward to? Uh, I just recorded, literally, right before I got off here, I just recorded my, uh, my review for Young Justice uh, episode... God. Yeah, yeah, episode nine, which was a really good episode. Uh, yes. I'm finally getting a chance to like to watch uh, a Squid Game, so I'm gonna have that up that Oof. as well Oof. as there was another series that I'm currently watching, A Wheel of Time that just dropped on, uh, oh, on Amazon. Oh, yeah, yeah I heard I heard some yeah. stuff about it. Um, I just recently reviewed the Chucky <laughs> series, which is uh, very very entertaining. So yeah, I'm, I'm catching up on a lot of series this weekend. Uh, I don't think I have any movie reviews coming uh, uh, late. Okay, Larry, what you got on your channel? Oh man, just it's uh, I, I have a a pile of products over here that just keeps getting taller and taller. The holiday season's coming; people keep sending stuff. I keep having to tell them no, and they keep showing up on my doorstep anyway. So, mm-hmm. um, I just have a lot of product reviews coming. I have some stuff. Somebody sent me a massage chair. Um, Damn. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Let me yeah, I'm like, I'm like, dude, like Planet some Fitness. Things. Somebody yeah. sent me a massage chair, a mas- back and neck massager, one of those uh, hand massagers, a foot massager, and a and one of those you know those percussion massage guns. So I, I'm I'm gonna be fully relaxed apparently after I get all this <laughs> stuff done. For real. <laughs> um, Bruh. yeah. I mean, I have some other stuff in here, like some um. Some camera stuff, like some microphones. I have a GPS tracker. I have a, an Android TV box I need to review. So I have a, quite a few things. I'm going to try and get it all done before the holidays so, you know, people can pick out their Christmas gifts. So, Gotcha. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for us. By the way, I am actively doing the Life Game Financial Channel, giving you guys stock tips, stock analysis, um, financial analysis, real estate analysis, money-saving analysis, Tesla analysis, and I've been mentioning to the fellas in our little group chat all these different stocks that I'm watching. So next week, I am going to be putting out my top three metaverse stocks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't want to be someone buying individual stocks, we've got three metaverse ETFs that have popped up. And you guys definitely want to get one of those. And then I'm going to also drop the video on the stock I just told um, Larry and the fellas about that is probably going to hit 2000 per share next year. Currently right now is 1055 but it's a great stock. I'm going to drop you guys that video next week as well. So if you haven't subscribed to Life Games Financial Channel, be sure to run on over there and get it. And that's yeah. going to do it for us, my people, to that next sexy as hell video. Go check out J-Mo. Peace, y'all. Peace.